To provide some dynamics to the theremin sound, we need to be able to change the sound volume in real time, especially to silence the theremin between one note and the next when the melody requires it. As we have seen already, this is done through another oscillator, called Volume Variable Oscillator, that we already built, which is used to create a variable DC voltage that controls a voltage controlled amplifier, or VCA. But how do we generate a DC voltage starting from the output of the Volume Variable Oscillator? The first step is to filter the oscillator output with a passband filter to be able to change the peak-to-peak -peak voltage level of the signal coming from the oscillator. When the signal from the oscillator equals the resonating frequency of the filter, we have the maximum output voltage. When the signal from the oscillator moves away from the resonating frequency of the filter, the peak-to-peak -peak voltage will decrease, until it goes to zero, when the frequency of the oscillator is far enough from the resonating frequency of the filter. Once we can control the change in amplitude of the signal, then we can add another stage which is part of the VCA itself to convert the signal into a DC voltage proportional to the peak-to-peak -peak value of the filter output. But this is something for another video. Today we will concentrate on the passband filter, or as it is named in the term in jargon, the volume resonant circuit. Let's take a look at its schematic. The schematic of the volume resonant circuit is very simple. It revolves around a simple parallel LC circuit. The inductor L1 and the capacitor C3 values are chosen in such a way that the resonating frequency of the circuit equals the maximum frequency that the volume variable oscillator can provide. The variable capacitor C4 is used to fine-tune the resonating frequency of the filter. Capacitor C1 is used to decouple the filter from the oscillator from the perspective of the DC current. Similarly, capacitor C2 is used to decouple the filter from the VCA control input. Diode D1 is used to preform the output signal in such a way that the negative part of it is removed, leaving only the positive part, which will be leveled and converted to a positive DC voltage in the first stage of the VCA, as we will see in the next video on the theremin. So, how does all of this work? When the hand of the player is far away from the volume antenna, the volume variable oscillator will provide its maximum frequency and this parallel C resonator will let all the signal pass through. But when the hand of the player gets closer to the volume antenna, the frequency of the oscillator will lower and the parallel LC circuit will start to shorten the signal toward ground. The closer the hand to the antenna, the smaller the signal at the output of the circuit. The VCA will take care of controlling the volume of the audio signal proportionally to the voltage amplitude coming into the VCA control input. If this is not clear, don't worry, it will become very easy to understand once we examine the circuit of the VCA. For now, let's move to the lab to check how the prototype of this circuit works with the aid of the oscilloscope. Here is the volume variable oscillator already mounted on a breadboard. You can see here the variable capacitor C4, then the inductor L1, the capacitor C3, all in parallel, and then there is the capacitor C1 on the input side, which goes over here, and the capacitor C2 on the output side that goes over here, where there is also the diode D1 that goes toward ground, and this cable, this black cable here, is basically a ground cable. To test the functionality of the volume resonant circuit, we need an oscillator that can be tuned at the same resonating frequency and also at frequencies below that. The obvious choice is to use the volume variable oscillator itself. But for that we also need to connect its antenna so we can control the frequency of the output signal. And so here I am soldering an alligator clip to a cable 
that has the other end terminating on a pin connector ready for the timing board. The alligator attaches to one end of the volume antenna, while the other end of the cable ends up on the connector attached to the resonating tank on the volume variable oscillator. Now that the antenna is connected, we can use the output of the volume variable oscillator to pilot the input of the volume resonant circuit. The oscilloscope connected to the output of the resonant circuit helps us tell if the signal coming from the oscillator becomes smaller as the frequency of the signal moves away from the resonating frequency of the volume resonant circuit. Incidentally, this also helps in tuning the resonating frequency of the prototype. We will have to do the same once we assemble the final version of the resonator on the timing board. And here it is! We can definitely see the signal at the output of the volume resonant circuit increasing and decreasing in amplitude while we wave a hand in front of the volume antenna. This is exactly what we were looking for, and so now that we have proven the circuit works, we can build its final version on the theremin board. And here is the final result of the project. Now that the circuit has been assembled in this area here, I already connected the oscilloscope over here. So now let's turn on the device and let's look on the oscilloscope what is going on. So here is the signal at the output of the new circuit, the volume resonant circuit. Let's see what happened when I get close with my hand to the volume antenna. You can see the signal is going down, so that's exactly what we wanted. Next time we will work on the voltage controlled amplifier where we will use this signal that we can modify now just moving our hands in front of the antenna to control the audio output of the theremin. Today we went through the theory of the theremin's volume resonant circuit and we have seen practically how it works and we have built and tested the actual circuit on the theremin board. In the next episode on the theremin we will work on the voltage controlled amplifier or VCA. At that point the theremin instrument can be considered completed and we can actually use it to make sounds and try to play some melody. What will still be missing is the audio amplifier stage that is supposed to be used to preview the note that the theremin will play next. Once that is done, we can really say that the theremin is completed. Please bear with me for a few more episodes on this topic, and then I will dedicate an entire video to entertain you with my prowess in playing this strange instrument. Or not. In the meantime, happy experiments. <laughs>